I know a lot of people that honestly won't date certain people because their friends and family might doubt it. And I'm the kind of person that's always dated people my family doubted. So I'm just very much, nope, I find them attractive. That's all that matters. When I dated my girlfriend in my early 20s, um, my coworkers would be like, really, you're dating her? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, why? She's so much fatter than you. And I was like, oh, yeah, but I find her attractive and she's like just like in my head within the range of what I find attractive. But plus like and I pointed out like, look, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat. And I still find you attractive. You guys don't question that. And it's like this idea that like fat men could be seen as more attractive than fat women. So I've I've heard it from a lot of people. People have absolutely been like, oh, why are you dating him? He's so like icky looking. I don't like the way he looks or why are you dating this guy? Like everyone has criticized people I've dated. And I'm always just like, look, I find them attractive and that should be good enough. But I, yeah. Jade says, isn't farm brother tall? Uh, I definitely, and I find, I definitely a little bit more weight on tall people suits well, for sure. So tall brother is not farm brother. Farm brother is six feet. Tall brother is six four. So tall brother is, is he's never been on stream. Okay, this video is um six black men versus one secret white guy on Jubilee. And I just have no idea how they managed to do this video without getting in trouble. So let's watch it, because I'm very curious. 12 days ago, 3 million views. This is Jubilee. I'm so excited and very confused on how they did this. Let's watch. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. I'm black. I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shook. Okay, for sure. Now, uh, one quick question I gotta ask. Are there any other, like, Africans or anybody with, like, any, like, Afrocentric ethnicities? My dad has Nigerian in him. Uh, what tribe? Do you know what tribe? Actually, I don't, but my mom's Ashkenazi so, Russian. Is the volume okay? Or, is, oh, Ashkenazi. Jew, and then my dad's literally, like, a mutt. He got Nigerian all the way from Asian to, he's literally mixed. How the F is this white guy gonna pretend he's black? Like, I just don't even know what's about to happen. Um, is Mark ex-brother or just Mark? Is he an ex-brother? No, Mark is just Mark. He's the gay brother. <laughs> everything. Okay, for sure, for sure. Uh, anyone else? Nope, just black. Yeah, I got nicknames. Well, uh, Rosebud is actually my street, mate, my street name. My real name's Riley. My name is Fitzgerald. That's like the full first name, but then Fitz is like the nickname people call me by. They do Fitzy? Yeah, sometimes they do Fitzy. Sometimes they be doing Fitzy. I think my strategy was to kind of uh, just just be black. I'm not gonna lie, when you said fits, I thought it was because you had tough fits on, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I too, I too, you can't you even see him, that, what you talking about, that, bro? That too. <laughs> I mean, if you could see, you'd probably be able to tell that I got a tough fit on. You I wasn't even that. funny. Can we all say what we're wearing and everything? I got a skeleton Ooh. all red, varsity jacket, cargo oh, pants on the crazy. side. What's up? We matching right now. I'm not wearing the skeleton fit, but I got like red. You got Air Forces on? I got Air Forces on. <laughs> no, you crazy. You know I, I mean? wish I could dap you up right now. I wish I could dap you up right now. Buddy. Wait, what type forces y'all got on? So I got the Air Force ones with like the little black stripe. Ooh, look at all their fits. Okay, look at how different they are. Um, okay, these are these are young guys, right? Like young millennials or Gen Zers. They all got jo jagger, joggers, jeg joggers, joggers. Yeah, joggers, that's what they're called. Skinny jeans, uh, boot cut jeans maybe? Regular jeans, what are these cutoff shorts? And then jog, no, joggers, that sounds wrong. No, that's what they're called, right? Joggers? Why does that sound wrong? That doesn't sound like the right word. But the boys wear the tight pants at the bottom. And then he's got like patches on his pants, which, okay. And then Converse, okay. This is so interesting. I don't see, there's not a lot of, um, these three kind of, well, these two look the most similar because they're both wearing the same cotton sweats. These guys look kind of similar. They all are actually pretty different, huh? Okay, yeah, half half black, half white, you right. Oh, I see where you're going with <laughs> you that. Said I didn't you said know. half black, half, half white. Half black, half white, you feel me? No cap, I used to wear some Pumas that were uh, half black and okay, half white because okay. of that my whole life. My strategy for today was to figure out who's safe rather than figure out who's the mole right off the bat. Ooh, who's one of the brothers? that's who, good. Who here knows what the smell of a Wait. hot... Wait. Are you messing? Wait, sweats? No, not just sweats though. It's the type of sweats. Comb on ahead. It stink. It stink real bad. <laughs> what are some prominent songs that you're gonna hear at a family reunion? Oh, they Ooh. played a lot of blues. Mark. Oh. Irvin C, Bobby Blue Bland. Then when they got drunker, it was Tupac and. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
he's doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His vocal inflections, like it just, it kind of it made, made me think of, you know, straight out of Compton, the movie. Maybe it felt too black. Oh, <gasps> yeah. no. that's what I'm saying. How's he gonna pretend he's black? For a second. <laughs> Yeah, I grew up on classic rock from my mom's side, and then I grew up on Motown from my dad's side. So anytime, you know, summer vacation in the backyard with my Nana, she'd be playing all Motown. My pop-up and Nana would be dancing, slow dancing to it, you know. <laughs> Telling them, stick your ass down. You know? <laughs> Everyone has Oh, wait. Danielle says, I think jeggings are baggy leggings and joggers are tapered sweatpants. Wait, is that true? Are jeggings leggings and jeans? I thought jeggings were leggings. <sighs> There's too many fashion words, y'all, and I am not. I don't just, I don't it has know. one person that's suspicious of them. <laughs> oh, so we know where, basically. Yeah, we made it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start off with a theme song. You finish it. We're brothers. Oh, Jade says, I don't even think he's lying about his upbringing, though, you know. Maybe they chose a black, or I'm sorry, a white boy who grew up in a black neighborhood or something. So he feels like he has that association enough to pass. Because honestly, if they just chose like a random white person, like, how would they be, how would they even, how, how would they even, they would have to basically like, yeah, be controversial, I think. Um, oh, no, jeggings are leggings that look like jean fabric. Oh, Lord, this is... Ugh. Others, we're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Okay, okay. Me growing up half black, half white. There's certain songs that they sing that I honestly didn't know word by word what to what to say. In the movie ATL, Rashad was running his daddy's house since what age? It's a famous line, y'all. You gotta know that. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't even know the answer to that one. Mm. Not anybody here knew. Mm. Shit. Oh, Let's complete this song. Uh, that boy got stretch, stretch pants. pants. That boy <laughs> got <laughs> stretch <laughs> pants. <laughs> what is that? I got one. I got one. Anybody know what it is when you say you put your foot in something? Mm -hmm. yeah, to cook your real good. Me and your mama we... whipping it up. Mm -hmm. that food okay. is smack. I was listening so intently on, on voices because you ever been on the phone? With like telemarketer, you can tell it's a black person on the other side. So you throw out little hints, you know, while you're talking, and like, oh yeah, we cool. I was trying to catch that. Call and response. Won't he do it? Yes, Won't he, he will. will. Who, who said that? Brevin. Jay. I'm suspicious of everybody else over here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> now all black people don't go to church now. But they notice. This is true. What flavor of Kool-Aid was y'all favorite growing up? Red. 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 I like gray. You mean purple? Oh. Yeah, that's kind of suspicious. That's low size. Right there. You say gray. Because where I'm from, where I'm from, we go by colors. We don't go by, we don't go by that, what you just said. Wait, wait, wait hold up. Why is that crazy? Because grape and purple are exactly the same thing. I mean, we used to call, we used to call Welch's grape soda. I don't know. It's just where I'm from, we go by colors. We go by colors. Ooh, the black bubbles colliding. Kool-Aid, not purple. Mm. Red flag. Matt, black man. Please, like, he was trying to come at me about the grape, but honestly, that I, I grew up with a bunch of friends, and we all called it that in Harlem. How you make your Kool Aid? You pour the sugar to the ancestors, say stop. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh, shit. In the summers, it was either if you outside or inside, you had to pick, right? Like yeah, it wasn't no running in and running up and up and inside your house, you know. So y'all, y'all feel that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't let that good air out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes to black women from the this is the black American bubble, right? As the comments are saying, uh, Monet. So here's the question. I wonder how they, mu I mean, obviously all of America is so diverse in that regard, but this is what's so funny. I love seeing, this is such a good example of bubbles. Cause like no one's a monolith. Like black people are not monolith. Like even Middle Eastern people, there is a real joy I take part. Like there is a real undescribable joy that you only know if you know when somebody who's a complete stranger but comes from your ethnicity or your like ethnic line who like knows something you know even though you've never met there's something really profoundly amazing about that because it's like wow which could happen anyway in any bubble with any anything but for me obviously i'm more connected to like the middle eastern part of my brain so there's something really rewarding about it and also something like 
confusing when you don't have the same shared experience. So like this is a great example of like different kinds of black bubbles and how some people say purple and some people say grape. And that's really amazing and beautiful and great. But it also can make you feel connected and alienated depending on which side you take. 90s, who do you think of off the rip? Be along. I'm going to say Holly Berry. Damn. Oh. I'm going to say, uh, 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 ah, she was fat. <gasps> she was a rapper. Um, wow, what's her name? Rap City. Jada Pinkett, or the sister from. Wait, you can't take two, dog. Yeah, you taking forever. Goodness, somebody gotta help me out with this. Shotty from like Black Panther, who was the queen. You feel me? Yeah, I know oh, her name, but yes, you got of course. Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Angela Bassett. Bassett. There we go. There we go. She's so beautiful. I, I think a, a, a Whitley from a different world. I can't remember her name. Old girl from a different world. Hmm. It, he is so. This white boy is so lucky. Everyone don't know names. Growing up watching my sisters, Raven Simone, Tyra Banks from that runway show. Um, is that 90s? Tyra's from the 90s. I was sitting back watching them being like, sheesh. You know what I'm <laughs> he didn't say anything smart. Or maybe it was the way he was edited. Contestants will now vote for who they think is white. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> My homeboy I was matching with is gone now, bro. When it comes to being black men, Microaggressions, let's talk about it. I got you right here, man. I went to a PWI. Man, I'd be chilling in the corner. There's only 5%. <gasps> Stephanie says, like, people who understand a tiger mom, exactly. Or people who understand, like, just a specific kind of bubble parent, bubble music, bubble church. There are certain Catholics I meet where I'm like, oh, we connect on this. And then there are some Catholics I meet and I'm like, you grew up more Catholic like I did because there's a higher, not a hierarchy, but there's a difference of even Catholic bubbles. Like I relate to some of my Catholic friends and then I relate to even more of my friends, like depending on which kind of Catholic they grew up. It's always nice to meet a Catholic. It's always nice to meet a Catholic who knows and actually believed for a really long time because I felt really connected to that religion for a long time. And then they left. It feels good. You know what I mean? Black card removed at the end of the show? Question mark. <laughs> I doubt it. Um... Is it? Okay. K-E-I. Is that Kai or K? Because I, I saw your comment in another video and I was like, oh, I know that person. They're in my audience because I notice names sometimes. And my uh, partner said I pronounced your name wrong. And I want to know, is it Kai or is it K? Like K like the letter or is it Kai? I just want to say your name right. Okay. Not that I'm good at that, but I just, I thought about it just now and I wanted to ask you. I have to go soon. Percent of us, but somehow they find a way to take a picture of you for the, for the dang for the life. Diversity. For, the diversity. for the diversity, right? I'm like, Bro. they only 5%. I got to give them credit though, because like finding us is going to be a little bit tough, but like they, they found a way regardless. I ain't even going to lie, Loke. I'm, I'm real lost. We from the streets. I ain't even get that far. Like college and stuff like that. Hey, we all got a different journey. That's cool. Yeah. yeah it's like the low key racist thing. Yeah. Like, not like. You're so well spoken. Wow. Why wouldn't I be? I'm a grown man. You're a black guy. Game. You're so well spoken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You peep game. You walk down. Damn, K. My partner was right and I was wrong. I blame my dyslexia. On the street, right? And a white folks see you. The first thing they do when they see you or acknowledge you, they fold their lips like and nod their head down. Mm -hmm. Make that weird face. Or they face, give you, you know hell space on the sidewalk or even step in the street. Yo. Or clutch their bag. Clutch their purse. Microaggression. Clutch like, the bag. Or take the next elevator. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of that. All of that. Hella room in the elevator, too. Stare at you like, you ain't supposed to be here. What, what was one of y'all favorite movies growing up? You feel me? Like, Loving Basketball, Don't Be a Menace. I mean, which, what did y'all watch? I like New Jack City. Like, that was all right. You from New York, yeah, bro. Dude. So you already know. Like, I am my brother's keeper, and that's some real shit, so. I'll tell you what, man. I watched the, uh, the first Power Rangers movie, like, twice a day for, like, the first four years after it came out, man. Power Rangers? Yeah. Power Rangers. <laughs> what season? What season? Oh, oh Mighty Morphin. Oh, Mighty Morphin. Facts. Facts. Hard is hard. It is. I watch, I watch anime, too. I'm not oh, wait. You watch anime? I do. Uh, what, you, do. what you like? What you like? I can Dragon Ball Z for shows again. Classic. Y'all, Naruto, come on. like. Don't laugh at me, but I love the Disney Channel originals. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh no, no. That was good. Hey, hey, obviously. Let's you know I mean? watch the Disney Channel. Boy. Y'all know about that static shot, though. Come on. I was literally just about to say. You know what I'm saying? Super this white boy is so smart, he's not even talking that much, which makes him which makes him forgettable. Nobody's even gonna realize Hero, he was there. Static shot. Woohoo! I met his voice actor, bro. He was, you uh, did? Feel my dude is cold dope, bro. Wait, he voices every single black, every single black, everything. And Samurai Jack. 
He man, he's got yeah. range, bro. Yeah. He's got range. All right, I got a question because I feel like we just gonna be be like we gonna be vibing, man. Yeah. Too much, yeah. Right? I got y'all after this. <laughs> Even if you white, we gotta tap in for real. <laughs> hey, you have to. Yeah, nah. you be like. But, uh, okay, so hmm. why does it bother you? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to point that out, bro. Okay, so in, in regards to dating and whatnot, my first girlfriend, she ended up being uh, a Russian girl, and my dad was he he always used to throw hints like, hey, man. You know, she's nice and all that stuff. And like, he wouldn't, he would never say it, but I, I knew like the mm-hmm. upbringing he had, he dealt with a lot of racism and stuff. So he kind of had like the hesitance mm-hmm. for like mm-hmm. those type of relationships. Did your parents or, you know, family members like say, hey, like. I mean, my mother was from Shreveport. So, you know, she used to be on that. Um, and she was older when she had me. She was already like in her late 50s. So okay. she wasn't playing with none of that really. I don't think my parents. She had him in her late 50s. It's ever put, they just want me to love who I love, but at the same time, I think there's always that underlying, like, you know, we would love for it to be a black woman, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was actually the same for me. They never said, don't bring a, a white girl home or anything like that, but I definitely know how it will make them feel. I will say, my parents, same, being immigrants and everything, they never said I couldn't date a specific color, but they definitely said not to date a certain religious background or bubble background, cultural background. Basically, if they weren't conservative and Catholic, don't date them. <laughs> if I was to bring home a sister, for sure. Like, oh, shoot, like, you're, you're with somebody who understands you, right. who can understand what you go through in life as a black man on the day-to-day-to-day basis, from the microaggressions to the Oof. ridiculous racism in your face. My people were cool or whatever. Like, I'm cool or whatever, too, but, like, I appreciate a sister, like, because she understands me and I don't have to explain myself. have a tie between Rob and Brevin. Y'all yeah, hit that side of relief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Brevin. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, like I said. Um, I didn't have a traditional like upbringing as far as like dating um, a lot of different people because I am a queer black man, but it took me a long time to get Ooh. there. Um, but as far I as- I knew it. I knew, I was like, this man feel queer as hell. Life, I had a, uh, two parents, uh, two older brothers, a little sister, um, super close. Yeah, um, this is hard, I don't know. I'm black, y'all, I'm black. <laughs> My name Robert, I go by Rob, I'm from South Central LA. We bounced all around. Uh, it was just me and my mother, three sisters and two brothers. I've been in and out the streets, uh, not too much school, and that's pretty. Does he kind of sound Hispanic? I don't be racist or nothing, but LA has a sound to it. And LA kind of sounds, I mean, it is Los Angeles. So like, I kind of feel like I hear an LA tone, but I would assume he was Hispanic, I think. If I was just listening to him, I'd be like, oh, he's kind of got a, like a, like they, like there's a talk, there's like a vibe. Oh, but he could also be Asian from LA. Asian from LA has the same, has the same, like, the there's a way LA people talk, like some pockets of LA where I'm like, oh, it's kind of like sing song. Like it's really smooth, but I can't tell if he's also changing his voice at all. I don't think so. He wants it. Ooh, he's got so much time on him. When it came to Brevin, it seemed like he was privileged and I relate more to struggle. Hearing some of the things he was saying, it kind of like made me think and like second guess. In my brain, I was like, this is probably just like one of those cases where he could be white and he's just a product of his environment. Brevin, you can't vote. <laughs> It looks like we are tied again. Wow. Fuck. What? I voted for Rob just because I think I heard everyone else speak a little bit more. I also voted Rob. First of all, you know, I, I'm just going to say that, like, the environment he grew up in, you know what I'm saying? I think that, like, you know, that's just a case where he could, like, relate to a lot of, like, black people's struggles. You feel me? Mm. Uh, but he might not be, like, black in and of himself. I voted for Brevin to get out. Um, not because Brevin necessarily said anything bad, but it was more so because of when Rob was talking, I felt like I was listening to one of my cousins talk. Um, and he definitely sounds like he's from South Central, for sure. Ooh. Not a whole lot of white people down there. So, Ooh. I'm gonna say he stays. Rob Black, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's the fact, Rob Black. He yeah. sound like people from around my way. So, he, no offense to you, Brendan, but 
But you gotta kick I rocks. <laughs> I, I hear it in Kevin's voice sure. too, though. Like, that's the thing. I hear it in both. Yeah, I but, hear it yeah. for sure. Bro. But Rob, like, I feel like I can say certain things to Rob, and yeah. he pick up on it quick. If I say something, certain things to the other, it's like, is you gonna really? Okay, hold up. You guys are talking about the whole struggle trauma bonding stuff. I'm seeing multiple comments here. Like, yeah, there is this. Um, it's interesting though because I kind of think it. It's like an American thing as well. We love the connection of struggle because it makes us feel like we did something, like we fought, we pulled ourselves up, like struggling, whether it's black or immigrant or whatever else. There's something like prideful there, but it's also like, hey, this is where I'm at right now. And I think that being in a place where you don't connect to struggle is hard, even for me. As a queer person, as like a Middle Eastern person, as a blah, 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 blah. There's something really nice about connecting through struggle. But obviously, I don't want to live there, which is why I felt like I had to leave the progressive bubble. Because I was like, ooh, we're a little too like in the suffering for me. And it was a little too like if you're not suffering, you're not authentic, just like he just said, which is like hard because this queer black guy probably has the least amount of privilege. And the idea that he sounded privileged is very interesting, right? That's what he said. We relate or... Yeah. You know, I no think disrespect, that what but... does hit and lick <laughs> Take me away. Yeah, Rob sound like he know good catfish. I'm not sure why I got voted out. I feel that a lot of times I've felt that I'm too white for the black people and too black for the white people. But it's we're, this is a real middle people are struggle. I was in the shower today and I was like, I gotta make a video about middle people like me and like him who's like never white enough, never person of color enough or never good enough. And it's like, bros, because like they want a thing they can identify with. They want a thing where they see themselves and all their people, but like, Sometimes you're just, it's okay, it's all good. I think the mole is still in the box and you want to continue playing the game. Raise your hand. No, Ooh. stop. What are you doing? 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 I knew I wasn't going to get eliminated. Um, Why is that? I don't know. I just came in like I was going to win. Really, I already said I was going to win, so. Anybody else got a question? Oh, yeah. All right, so let's make things a little bit spicy, you feel me? What's like Why did he one do that? critique? Why did he do that? What's one thing that you think like black people could be like doing better in? Or like a hot take about like black people in, you know, our community and stuff like that. Since the beginning of the US. Uh... Samir, you're Iraqi and Polish? That is so unique. I just showed my 23 and me to my partner. And I was like, there you go. It's like Levantine, which I don't even know what that is. And Iraqi basically is my lineage. But I was like Polish. Like my people have legit never left Iraq until the 50s or whatever it was. Because like there's like no, like I'm, yeah, that's so interesting. Polish. How did that happen? How unique. Um, with the obvious mistreatment of black people, a lot of information pertaining to being able to further us as a people has been withheld from us. Matt, hold on. Jade says they might get more money if they go longer. Oh. And more so recently, the information has been normalized to be pushed out, and this generation is really doing a lot to make sure that we are as gamed up as possible with all the tax information, with all that stuff, so we can no longer have those continuing circumstances of not having the information to be able to financially evolve as a people. And I think that's dope. But I also think that people need to really be on their P's and Q's with that stuff because the more we sit around and don't go after this information, the more our situation continues to remain the same financially. Even though we spend some of the most money in the US, it never stays within the black community. The gang banger. Yes. That yeah, gotta elaborate. stop. Elaborate on that. Well, it's, just, it's no point in gang banger no more. I mean, mm. uh, if you think about it, you gang banging. Uh, and then it got so bad where you, you know, everybody that run black in prison is together. Even if you from the enemy side, the op side or anything. So if you go to prison, so if I, if I supposed to gang bang, shoot somebody, and if I get caught in- That man is so sus. That man is so sus. This, this man, this man right here, he's like, Rob is white. Rob is white. Like, I honestly though, he's kind of sloppy with this answer. And I kind of, 
Ooh, he should have gotten so if you go round. to prison, so if I if I supposed to gang bang, shoot somebody, and if I get caught and I got to go to prison and get along with the people who I just slid on, it, just, it don't make no sense. And there's no money involved. Mm, I feel that. Mm. So it's just, it's... Does he feel that? This guy's laughing. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is that's, so fun. That's the first thing, gotta go. Don't be so quick to buy Gucci. I thought gangbanging was kind of weird when he said it but monet i wasn't sure if i was being like weird but i was like oh that feels like a i don't know if i like that word so for a second that that did throw me off because i was like that kind of like that ooh, i don't know we literally would just say violence in the community like that's the thing Ooh, be proud of louis like i mean i'm not one to speak myself i got ricks and suvi on but at the same time like if one of the homies has a brand, you should be going to go buy that, yeah. you know? I feel oh. like uh, a critique is just, uh, my little brother is, uh, he's at a HBCU, a small one in Oklahoma. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, nothing against like the school or anything that people is around, but I feel like the ideas and uh, and like the mindsets that he's been around from his, uh, you know, early childhood and whatnot, because uh, have been just like not open-minded to new possibilities, opportunities, are out there we just got you know open-minded to it and try to figure out what works for us you know this um i'm sorry samir says my dad escaped iraq and then ended up in poland started university in polish and met my mom <laughs> that's so cute that's so great oh that's so lovely what a great story might be on the fault of like the media but i think sometimes we over sensationalize like our pain <sighs> and i think that there's so much more to like the black community whether it's joy or okay wait mx says we say we say gangbanging still in la okay so la bubble that's normal language and he is from la okay like, i'm with having it then. a good laugh or something like there's just so much more to us than like you know the pain that we go through and i think that needs to be you know shown more in like our movies our tv shows just like the way we talk about like the way we talk about things like i think that there's just so much more to the black yeah. community than that i want to see black people doing goofy stuff on screen not just being slaves you know right yes. come on now talk about it or everybody's chimed in except the white guy all of them felt that sentence except the white the criminals guy. Or, or, yeah. or they're gangsters yeah. and killers. No, that's not yeah. even like a thing for america but like you go to china you go to like some of these other places like that's all they see of us you feel yeah. me yeah. word Y'all gonna be real? I think we're all good, bro. Say it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Why is this so funny? Bitch. Why is this so funny? Sorry, Gabriel. You know what I'm saying? It happens. Come on. Over here. If you think the mole is still in the box and you'd like to continue the game, raise your hand. All right, so that's unanimous. We're gonna end the game right then and there, okay? If the lights turn green, that means you voted the mole out and you all win. If the lights turn red, that means the mole is still in the box and you all lose. The thought popped in my head of, what if you had it wrong the whole time and the guy right next to you is the one? Three, two, <laughs> one, it is red. That means the what? mole is still here. <laughs> you guys can lift your blindfold in three, <laughs> two, one. What? This is, hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Rob. That's wrong. That's, that's wrong. Oh, that's wrong. I'm Brevin. What? Brevin? Yo, what's up? Yeah. Brevin. Yo. What's up, yo? What? Big ups to you, yo. yo. Big ups to you. Why is that so hey, great? Why is that so great? Of course, there's been like a so couple great? white folks who are cool, but like, not like Rob, like that was different. My name is Robert, but uh, they call me Milk. I'm from South Central. I got adopted at seven days old as a baby, like out the hospital to a, uh, a black mother. So I was raised with her ever since seven days old. That's crazy. <laughs> My whole family is black. I didn't even know the other, I never met the other oh, people until I was like that's dope. grown, grown. That's real. My, my upbringing was a little strange. I was the only white kid at every party, every birthday. That would be so hard. 
This is, that would be, but also that's how black kids feel when they're adopted into white families is they never feel quite good enough. Like it's, there's something, well, not all of them, obviously, but there's that struggle with some bubbles where adoption can be really hard. I know my partner and I have openly talked about adoption and we're very interested in adopting a baby that either is his ethnicity or mine because we'd like that baby to grow up in an environment that made sense to them. Not that I'm opposed to adopting any baby for any reason. I think all babies are babies and should be loved no matter if they're zero years old or a hundred years old, like babies are babies and I love them. So I just, this must be such an interesting upbringing, the same as being raised black in a white household. Like it just, or opposite or whatever, if you stand out, that must be really hard. I never really, that never really like bothered me, I guess. Is it hard for you to fit in with white people? Oh, it was. It's getting a little better. Huh. Uh, what about for black people then? Is it easier or was it more difficult to get along with black nah, people? Nah, nah, nah. I mean, that's all I was around my whole life. Right. Jail, yeah. county jail, yeah. juvenile yeah. hall, every yeah. party, yeah. everything. And your whole family, like, they just all accept you. Because I got sides of my white family that, like, they wouldn't even hold me as a baby because I oh. had a black dad. Nah, nah, hell nah. What? Nah, I had a good family. It's Since my up. mom married a black man, they sat shibbets for her, which basically in the Jewish community means that you're dead to me. And it's only most um, lone feeling that you get sometimes when you feel like you can't relate to anybody. I was like the baby, Loki, like the youngest one. Yeah. Wow. Bubbles be wild, bro. Yeah. 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 What is Yay. a misconception people have about black men? Put us in a, in a box that basically states that we're always angry or mad. There's a lot of happy black folk in the world. Like me personally, I'm happy. We're not as monolithic as a lot of people would make us out to be. We are bankers, we're lawyers, we're doctors. We all originated from Africa. We all, because you're further away from the equator, it doesn't matter. Black is beautiful. Pause. I really have to go. My appointment's in like less than seven minutes. Ah, oh, that was really lovely. <laughs> I really liked that. That was so fun. What an interesting life. I wondered how they were going to pull that off and they did pull it off, but I, I wondered how they were going to pull it off. That was really great. Guys, what a great live show. Thank you so much for being here and spending time with me. I really, really appreciate it. I wish I could stream longer. I have so many things I want to watch with you, but I really got to get going because I have my nutritionist appointment. And then I am filming tomorrow's podcast or Wednesday's podcast tomorrow. So that will be really exciting this week. I think you guys will really enjoy that one. Oh, that was cool. I love, God, what a good example of bubbles. What a great example. Okay. I love you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, God, what a great video. Okay. I will talk to you guys very soon. Um in my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking. Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.